Today, we report on studies included in the plenary session at the 2016 ASCO Annual Meeting. Welcome to Enclave News Network, I'm Gina Columbus. The addition of temozolomide to short course radiation therapy, followed by monthly doses of temozolomide, was found to significantly improve progression-free survival in elderly patients with glioblastoma. Results of the Phase three study presented at ASCO show that the combination reduced the risk of death by 33%. The chemoradiation regimen improved the median overall survival by 1.7 months and progression-free survival by 1.4 months. Additionally, quality of life did not differ between the two groups. However, patients who received temozolomide had more nausea, vomiting, and constipation than those who were given radiation therapy alone. Commenting on the results, lead study author Dr. James R. Perry, the Krola Family Endowed Chair in Brain Tumor Research at the Odette Cancer and Sunnybrook Health Sciences Centers in Toronto, Canada, said, Although glioblastoma disproportionately affects older patients, there are no clear guidelines for treating these patients, and practice varies globally. This study provides the first evidence from a randomized clinical trial that chemotherapy in combination with a shorter radiation schedule significantly extends survival without a detriment to quality of life. In children with high-risk neuroblastoma, the addition of a second autologous stem cell transplant to standard therapy was found to improve outcomes, according to results of a Phase three study presented at ASCO. At a three-year follow-up of the National Cancer Institute-funded trial, 61.4% of patients who received the double transplant were alive and disease-free, compared with 48.4% who received a single transplant. The three-year overall survival rate was slightly higher in the tandem transplant group than the single transplant group at 74% versus 69.1%, but the difference was not statistically significant. Commenting on the results, lead study author Julie R. Park, an attending physician at Seattle Children's Hospital and professor in pediatrics at the University of Washington School of Medicine, said, This finding will change the way we treat children with high-risk neuroblastoma in North America, which still claims many young lives and is in urgent need of better treatments. However, the regimen we use for high-risk neuroblastoma is also the most aggressive and toxic regimen we give to children with cancer. For that reason, future research needs to focus on both exploring possible late effects of current therapy and developing newer, less toxic therapies. A triplet regimen, including the anti-CD38 antibody daratumumab, bortezomib, and dexamethasone, significantly improved outcomes for patients with recurrent or relapsed multiple myeloma, according to Phase three findings presented at ASCO. Results of the study show that the addition of daratumumab reduced the risk of disease progression by 70%, while very good partial response rates were doubled to 59% and complete remission rates to 19%. Additionally, daratumumab did not significantly add to the most common adverse events of the bortezomib and dexamethasone regimen, as patients experienced slightly higher rates of hematologic toxicity, infections, and peripheral neuropathy. In a statement, Lead study author, Dr. Antonio Palumbo, chief of the myeloma unit at the Department of Oncology at the University of Torino in Torino, Italy, said, We've suspected for a long time that CD38 is the major treatment target for multiple myeloma, but these results are unprecedented in this cancer. It's clear now that we'll be moving to a three-drug regimen with daratumumab as the standard of care. That's all for today. Thank you for watching Enclave News Network. I'm Gina Columbus.